Hello, and welcome to the Veterans History Project. I'm your host, Mike Vanderpool. My guest today is Mrs. Joanne Kotcher, uh, born March 15, 1941, and currently living in Rochester Hills, Michigan. Welcome to the program today, Joanne. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us uh, briefly how you were involved with our country's military? I served as a um, paid professional staff for the American Red Cross in uh, recreation. Our job was to go to isolated areas and present uh, recreation programs to help um, bring up the morale of the troops. Um, what made you uh, want to do something like that? A lot of people ask me that, and I always told them I volunteered to go to Vietnam to make it a little easier for the people who had to go. Did you have any, any friends or family who were involved with the military? Um, no, my father was a farmer, so he, he was um, not required to go to World War II. Uh, my husband played football and had bad knees, so he was not required to go to Vietnam. I had a, a, a relative a couple of generations back who served in the Civil War, and um, I understand that he was a prisoner of war, and uh, when he got back home, he had trouble with his uh, digestion for the rest of his life. So I guess, I guess he contributed quite a lot, maybe for the rest of us. <laughs> uh, what, what were you doing at the time then, at, at home? At the time, I was uh, a teacher, teaching seventh grade math. Uh, I met, uh, I, I was uh, living uh, in, in a town close to where my sister was. She was a WAC, Women's Army Corps, and uh, she had a friend who had uh, this job. Uh, her friend was a WAC, and um, uh, before joining the Army, her friend had this same job with the Red Cross in Korea. And, uh, it looked interesting, and I asked her about it. And the more she told me about it, the more interesting it became. Um, so she told me how, how to investigate, and, and um, I ended up signing up to go to Korea. Uh, how did that process work? I mean, how did you find, where did you go to actually sign up? Um, uh, I, I signed up... Um, uh, I guess I, I wrote a letter and they called me and I had, I had a day-long interview at uh, Red Cross headquarters in Atlanta. I was interviewed by one person after another all day long. One would interview me for a, an hour or two and pass me on to somebody else and then they all took me to lunch and then we interviewed for the rest of the day and uh, they gave me uh, extensive physical exams, and um, uh, next thing I knew, they accepted me. <laughs> and then, did they provide you any type of training? Did they let you know what you were getting yourself into? They, they did. It was excellent training. Um, I was in a class, I think w there were about 15 of us. Uh, they brought us to Washington, D.C. for two weeks, and we had classes all day, every day, um, instruction, uh, history and goals, and missions of the Red Cross and tours of the Red Cross and what the Red Cross does, and uh, tours of Washington, D.C., which was wonderful, saw everything in Washington, D.C., uh, and um, uh, they talked about our job, uh, what we were going to be doing, uh, but uh, they never, uh, they told us we were going to be doing recreation, writing recreation programs, but they never told us how to write a program because they wanted it to be new, fresh, and creative. So all of it was supposed to be our own ideas. And then they, we had classes in military courtesy and things like that. And it was interesting, they, they told us a story, one of the um, women told us a story about um, an earlier um, Red Cross girl. Uh, they had told uh, they had told everybody to to uh, uh, be proper and and uh, behave yourself. <laughs> and uh, she was at a, a military party, and um, she felt someone pinch her on the behind, and she turned around and she was looking at a star. The general had pinched her. And she kind of backed off, and later she asked the supervisor, what should I have done? 
And the supervisor said, follow through. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody take advantage of you. Uh, we, were, we were in a lot of situations where we had to be, um, we had to take control of the situation and act properly. And um, there was a lot of emphasis on that. Um, and then we also, we also went to the Pentagon and got dog tags. <laughs> and we got fitted for uniforms. They were tailored. They were beautiful. Um, uh, all kinds of paperwork. What was, that, what was that feeling like going through all that? It seems like it might have been a whirlwind of, of things going on. There. Oh, it was exciting. It was thrilling. I was really excited to be going someplace on the other side of the world to do something that looked like it would be fun and make a really good contribution. Did you have any reservations about leaving your family behind? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to go. <laughs> they, they asked me if, um, if, uh, what would my parents say if uh, they asked permission to let me go overseas. I was like 23 or 24 years old. And I said, oh, don't ask my parents. They would say no. <laughs> uh, I didn't want anybody to interfere. I didn't want anybody to ask any questions that would, might stop me from going. So after training, did you go right over to uh, Vietnam then? It w I was to Korea. To Korea, okay. I was there for 14 months. And what was that like? Uh, Korea was a very established place, unlike Vietnam. Um, uh, we, Red Cross had, and the military had been in Korea since 1952. Uh, this was um, 64. Um, they had uh, Red Cross programs, uh, recreation programs in Korea for, oh, 10 years, I suppose. Um, and um, everything was all set. Uh, um, there wasn't, weren't a lot of surprises, but it was a very worthwhile program. Uh, we were, I never had a job where I was so appreciated. It was, it was wonderful. <laughs> What did you, uh, how many women were over there then with the Red Cross? Um, we were in units depending uh, on um, our territory and how many people were available. In Korea, the units were, um, oh, maybe five to 14 people. Uh, in Vietnam, the program was brand new when I got there. I was among the first to go. And um, I went to a unit that had three people, so I was number four. Um, all of our, um, we set everything up. Um, uh, we, we contacted the military, um, asked if they wanted programs. Um, uh, we would be the first, first, uh, first people to ever do a program in Vietnam, everywhere we went. Now, what was that right at the beginning of the Vietnam War that you were there? Right. In my, in my first unit, uh, I, was, uh, I was, shortly after I got there, I would say within a month or two, uh, they celebrated one year in Vietnam, the units. Uh, and people had started to rotate going home. So um, this, was, this was brand new, mm -hmm. right at the beginning. Did you notice uh, first arriving that there was a real difference in the soldiers from Korea to Vietnam or in the attitudes that people had? Not a lot. Um, th they were a little more enthusiastic because it was, wow, <laughs> <laughs> girls are here? <laughs> this is not a bad place. <laughs> It, in in Korea, they 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 knew we were there. They expected us, and uh, they were very very happy to see us. In Vietnam, it was uh, holy cow. 